All right, everybody hear me? Thank you so much for this opportunity, Dr. Silverstein, Dr. Glatt, to speak to you in this very beautiful place today. This talk developed from a conversation I and my co-author had at the Southern Regional Meeting of the ABA last fall. We were discussing details of pressure calculations and I was giving him some numbers that uh, resulted in a bit of surprise. So we decided to make this presentation. What I am about to discuss amounts to really full disclosure of what Bioconcepts and the other manufacturers have unwisely come to regard as trade secrets. We will be looking at very closely at the na nature of compression and at least part of the reason that some of the numerous studies of pressure delivery and the efficacy of pressure garments have yielded such ambiguous results. This is our man, Pierre Simon Marquis de Laplace, very interesting character who narrowly escaped the guillotine a couple of times. The pressure calculation ultimately reduces in physics to an equation called Laplace's law. It is a law that unequivocally describes the relationship between a cylinder of a given radius, pressure inside the cylinder, and the tension in the wall of the cylinder. It is not actually something that we can choose to utilize or not, it is always there. This is the actual law, P equals T over R, pressure equals tension, over radius. The first thing that you notice is the directness of the relationships between the three elements of the equation. Increasing or decreasing one of the elements means an automatic and direct change to at least one of the other two. It is unavoidable, it is the law. In the application of Laplace's law to a cylinder enveloped with an elastic fabric, tension is the force required to stretch the fabric a given amount. Once this is determined, the value is inserted into the equation and then pressure can be calculated for a given radius. Radius, of course, is directly related to the measured circumference, which we receive from our fitters and therapists around the country and around the world. Circumference is given by the simple formula we all learned in grade school and high school, two pi r, two times pi times radius. When Bioconcepts receives a new fabric from the fabric manufacturer or is suspicious that a new fabric lot is not going to be suitable, we put a sample on a force gauge, stretch it at programmed intervals, and measure the force required to stretch it. At Bioconcepts, we are of the opinion that most custom pressure garments worldwide are made by sewing the garments some set amount smaller than the circumferences measured and that little or no attempt is actually made to calculate the pressures that would be affected at any given circumference. We do not actually do it that way. We rely on the Laplace law to tell us that the pressure will be measured, what the pressure will be at every measured circumference given the assumptions of the model. Here's what happens when a simple reduction factor is applied to a compression sleeve using our fabric that we happen to call regular material. It is a nylon spandex recommended for adult patients. It is extremely similar to many of the other spandex fabrics that the other manufacturers used. It is commonly used in brassiere manufacture, swimsuits, lots of other things. <clears throat> Keep in mind the reduction factor is essentially equal to tension in the Laplace law. It is what creates the force that results in the pressure. A sleeve designed in this way will exhibit a tendency for the smaller circumferences at the distal part to be higher pressure than proximal parts, but the distribution of circumferences on a sleeve is not going to be continuous from small to large. As a result, some distal areas, such as this, will receive a lower pressure than some more proximal areas. We don't usually want that to happen. Now let's look at the complementary calculation in which the pressure is held constant so that we can see how the reduction factor, that is the tension, is going to vary with the circumferences in order to achieve that pressure. Again, we are using our regular material. At large radii or circumferences, the forces, that is the tensions, required to achieve specific pressures dramatically increase. A reduction factor of 0 0.50, or in other words, the garment is going to be made about half the size of the patient. Most patients couldn't actually don such a garment. 
So at this point, I need to emphasize, re-emphasize, and perhaps overemphasize a simple point. The force, that is the tension required to achieve a given pressure for a specific circumference is the same, no matter what is used to create the force. You could wrap the body in corn husk, aluminum foil, titanium mesh, silk, bamboo fibers, saran wrap, cotton gauze, etc., etc. It doesn't matter what you use. The force has to be there. If the force is not there to compress that cross-sectional area, you're not going to get the pressure. So now let's look at the pressure resulting from a single reduction factor applied to a range of medium to very small circumferences using a, using a slightly different spandex formulation that we happen to call close knit. The first thing we notice is that the tip of the little finger is going to receive approximately 128 millimeters of mercury pressure on a two inch circumference with a 0.85 reduction factor. So the circumference that we get from the therapist is actually multiplied by 0.85. That's the pressure that's at that circumference. I promise you that this patient's vascular system in his little finger is not going to collapse. Uh, this is something that uh, is going to happen with all of them. In fact, what was actually happens is that we are more often asked to snug the fingertips up a little bit than loosen them. Calculating the pressure for only 25 millimeters of mercury on such a small radii or circumference would require so little force that the patient and their therapist would complain that the garment can't actually be doing anything. And I, I actually might agree. The human hand, of course, is a particular challenge because the cross sections are so far from the idealized circular cylinder the model works best with. No matter what anyone does, the patient will experience different pressures around the same part of the hand, although the cross section overall should average the targeted pressure. This is a little animation that my engineering friends, David and Sky, produced. What we're doing is we're looking at the way the radius of curvature changes in this figure as we go around the outline of the hand. And here it is on the concave palmar surface, zero pressure. Now it goes back around to the tighter side of the hand, that would be the ulnar side. Now we're on the dorsal side of the hand, rotating around back to the radial side. And at each of these different radii, we see a different pressure on the same tension. So we have a tension here, in this case in newtons per meter, the radius in inches, the pressures in pascals. We see that little dot change. It's going to come around, get more pressure here, less pressure, and then it's going to flip to the concave side, zero pressure. Industry practices. There is nothing that compels bioconcepts to a rigorous application of engineering methods in our garment manufacturing practices. And we actually go further than I've already described. What we do is we plot our force gauge measurements and then use statistical software to fit nonlinear third order regression equations to the resulting data plot that describes the curve to a very high degree of accuracy. The coefficient, coefficients of this regression equation are then used to calculate the reduction factors required in the garment design. What I am doing today is calling for manufacturing standards. This industry has matured. It is time for us to be talking about this. We need customers to be asking about the details of engineering practices and demanding proof of quality assurance. However, I do not believe that our customers, hospitals, clinics, medical supply shops, whatever, are actually equipped to make such an evaluation. And this is where I think an advisory commission might be of assistance. To the extent the customers buy into the idea, industry would be compelled to follow. So thank you for your kind attention.